Thank you, Kamada, for this introduction. It's lovely to feel young. Uh, and forget my birth date. <laughs> uh, I also would like to uh, thank the organizing committee here for this workshop, especially uh, for uh, uh, this invitation. And uh, as you see here, my talk has changed now. The, uh, the title is Mammalian Cell Culture Technology Cell Line Development and the Process of Optimization. Uh, Johan lecture talk is great, it's too heavy. And uh, to follow Johan on the same line is very difficult. So last night actually, kind of sent me a message, email message to tell me the sort of audience and expecting with their background is not in cell culture. I think very few of you would be worked on uh, memory and cell culture. Uh, so I decided to change it. Last night, the whole talk changed from state of the art, what we do in the lab, and my current work in molecular cell culture molecular biotechnology to something to give you an introduction of cell culture. So forgive me if some of you would know this already and it's basic. The reason is I see many of young people who probably wanted to choose cell culture, mammalian cell culture rather than go into microbial cell culture. So I'm trying to give you some idea about the differences between the two types of work and the advantages of using animal cell culture for the production of biotherapeutics, biopharmaceuticals, uh, and then uh, with a move to uh, give you some idea about the kind of work we do in, in our lab. To start with, it just let's look at the technologies at different stage of life cycles. And you see here, if I have the pointer, please. This. Okay, then you will see that mammalian cell culture is still in the growth. In fact, this is a few years ago, the, uh, the growth. So it's, uh, it's actually have moved a little bit, uh, say, between growth and a mature technology in comparison to the microbial or conventional microbial fermentation, which is in, in the mature stage of development. To follow with mammalian G GMP production pharmaceuticals, you have the insect cell, transgenic animal, therapeutic vaccine, gene therapies, cell therapies, uh, transgenic plants. These are part of the stem cells now, stem cell technology. These are all like the applications of mammalian cell in, the, in, in, uh, uh, in, in vitro uh, study, analysis, and pro productions of therapeutics. Uh, and, and as you see, there is still a lot of research going on, fundamental research in, the, in, in developing the processes, in improving process, improving cell life used for the production of therapeutic products. And from these, some examples of therapeutic products over the years produced and their share of the market, or the, the animal cell like values of some of the blockbusters. Of, of uh, biotherapeutic which are produced from animal cells in culture, in vitro, in bioreactors. And I would use now the term bioreactors instead of fermenters. There are distinct differences between fermentations and bioreactions for mammalian cell, cell culture. So we use bioreactors instead of fermenters for the, as a term for the production, large scale, let's say, production of therapeutic product. And if you see that APO, for example, the treatment of anemia, the share value of the, the value of US dollars, says that $4 billion a year. In, 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 and these are produced by two different bio, uh, uh, biopharma. Monoclonal antibodies taking the big share of the component product producing. And I will tell you why they are produced in, in, in animal cells 
a specifically a Chinese hamster ovary cells in vitro rather than in yeast or in microbial cells. Over 35 years since the, uh, the cloning of insulin uh, in 1978 and the development of this technology has risen to about now we've we'll uh, take an example of antibody production of from 50 milligram per liter to 5,000 milligram per liter. So it's really a, a, a very important and significant increase in the production resulted in, the, in, in, in this field. I think that because we have relied on the technology already exists for, memory, for, for microbial cells. So microbial cells, we learn from microbial technologies and we implement their technology in for large scale productions of therapeutics from memory cells. And you see also that the uh, cell number, the cell number used to be very low, two times 10 to five cells per mil, and uh, that cell, uh, that, uh, sorry, that one, one time 10, let's say cell number one times 10 to seven cell per mil, now in comparison to two times 10 to five cell per mil in the mid, mid 80s. What this means that over the year, the increase in productivity mainly resulted from the increase in cell number, the cell density. This is mainly happening for media development. This is a media, the media used here is a very complex media. In the beginning, we used to add serum. Now, it's all changed with serum replacement. It's a complex media from amino acids, vitamins, um, uh, the, the combinations of growth factors, and uh, additional material flock, a uh, main one is glucose and the glutamine to supply energy to the cells. Now, I wanted to give this example to show you how innovation is so important in reaching our target. And I take the example of penicillin production. And as you see here, from 1928 to 1995, the 10,000-fold increases in the in the in the in the, in the title of the product happened because it happened because of the improved media, improved strains, the, uh, the development of semi-synthetic synthesis, and for the improved stability of these strains, resulted from like we say per billion units like two hundred thousand dollar and now it's like around twenty twenty five to twelve dollar per billion units. That's how intensive the research of all of these years happened to reduce the cost because of the innovation. Now that is also happening with animal cell culture. In a very short period of time, they say, within 35 years, since 1978, when the discovery of recombinant insulin to produce until 2013, now, with industrial standard, is one to three gram per liter. And exceeding that, we're reaching the five gram per liter, and the, some of them, the leader, like Lonze, five gram per liter, it's so easy for them to produce a developing cell line that's highly productive, highly stable. And the important thing to remember in this, in this field is that high productivity and high stability are very important. If you don't have a stable cell line, you can't have the productions. And you have to prove that to the regulatory authorities before you commit yourself for any large scale productions. And then this is the expectation 2020. It's going to be normally more than 10 gram per liter. So we are quickly approaching the production by microbial cells and penicillin 
production. So 2,000 mammalian cells will produce as much as microbial cells um, of, of therapeutic uh, product. Now, with this, the expression level is very important. Expression level is mainly happening because, as I said, the immediate development, but also the use of the expression factor. There are so many expression factors available now with the mammalian cells to have <coughs> high production. And most of products in development, because they are like monoclonal produce in now in animal cells, in CHO. The focus now is on development and changing of the cell line rather than finding a use of the cell lines. In the 80s and 90s, there were a tendency of looking at these uh, other cells alternative to this cell. Why we are with CHO cell? What is the advantage of cell, CHO cell? And some people thought of developing human cell lines. But then at the end, now most of scientists, most of the production engineers thinking that this is this is the cell line they have to stick with with for the for the next 20 years. So they have to develop this CHO cell line. And cell culture at uh, the upstreams or the downstream of it would contribute 50% of total manufacturing costs. We see here that the uh, the expression level is so important that relative cost is actually go down with the increase in the relative time. Yes. Reaching, of course, a minimum would you have it very difficult to do with, with, with increasing the, uh, uh, the level of expression. <laughs> and from this side, you see also the prices, and this uh, related to the scale. So you can enhance a productivity by enhancing the total productivity in your fermenter, but it also, uh, and, and also by enhancing specific productivity. The specific productivity means you enhance uh, the, uh, the production at the cellular level. The cell become more productive as the, uh, as the, uh, the, the metabolism, you know, uh, uh, and the, the, uh, the uh, pro productivity at the molecular level, enhance, so it produces more per cell. And it produces more per cells, but that could affect the growth rate, affecting the cell number. So this is why most important for industry is to not to look at the specific productivity, but to look at the yield, at the total uh, productivity. And this total productivity is affected also by the, 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 the scale. A stable cell line, you can increase the productivity from very low level, uh, from a very small scale, like 10 mil uh, to a 10,000 liter without changing the productivity level. But the price is going to change with the increase in production scale. And as you see here, that with the 10,000 liter fermenter, you might reach about the gold, gold price. Here. So most of the protection at the moment is more expensive than the gold price. It's a very expensive process, and this is why this, they call these products are high value products. Now, if you compare this, uh, the, you see many, many as well with bacteria and yeast, you will see many of the advantages. Most advan important advantages for it is the post translation and modification, the glycosylation, which is very important for therapeutic products. The clearance from the systems is, is, is so quickly if you produce cell, if you produce product without the glycosylation. Now, the, also, there are uh, that, that the production cost will determine also the, the quantity of product produced, the quantity and type of contaminants, the relationship between them is very important for the downstream processing, and beside the glycosylation, the economics and regulatory issue also complicate the process and uh, would necessitate, for example, the production of some therapeutic product, most of therapeutic product, in, in, uh, in mammalian, mammalian cells to produce complex, uh, complex, complex uh, proteins. 
Now, if comparing to bacteria, the process is still, like I say, inefficient or costly, very costly. And a lot of people will say, let's try to modify the bacterial cells to produce a glycosylated product or yeast, or finding low organisms to produce this product because it's cheaper to produce it in microbial cells. And, and this is always like this. The question will remain and finding a way to overcome this problem by, by and producing it in, 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 in microbial cells. But it will remain for a long time, this produced in, in, in animal cells. The good thing for us is that we are still ahead of the transgenic animals. For some time, we thought we would be out of business. Everything would be produced in transgenic animals. And, if you, and a lot of the earlier studies show advantages producing cheaper to produce. But this one showing you this graph uh, or this table will show you that no, that's not true that transgenic animals are more uh, 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 less expensive than, than uh, bioreactor technology. You see here, to produce at this level, 3.4 gram per liter, and the yield, kilogram, 4,000 kilogram, that's 410 per year, so you need six times around 12,000 liter bioreactors. And look at this, compare this with the transgenic coal. Good. Now, here you have to produce the same, uh, it's nearly about, let's like, say, five production per gram per liter, then an, uh, for, for uh, annual yield of 1460 goats. So if you convert that and you wanted 40,000, then you will need here uh, uh, 10,000 goat herd to produce the same amount. And remember that when you produce this goat herd, you need time. Here it's much faster and quicker to put it in bioreactor and you scale up or from the 10 mils. To produce that, you will need years of that. And then if you are in competition and you wanted your <coughs> therapeutics to come out to the market, you can't afford to wait for all of these years to produce the 6,000 uh, uh, goats. Uh, the, to produce your product. Now, in vitro, in bioreactors, there is, it's like a process, any process. There are steps you have to take. First of all, you have to transfect your cells with the uh, protein of interest, with the gene of interest, to produce your protein, the recombinant protein. And then you choose this well, by this time, you have to choose the expression factor and you transfect in your host cells. The selection process is the most important step in the whole process. And this takes the most time and it's actually delayed the process because it sometimes takes more than a year to select a stable high producer uh, cell, uh, cell line. Then you prepare the cell banks for production, you expand it to growth, the dilution to produce inoculum for final reactor volume. If you don't produce, then you have to produce sufficient cells for your cell banks and also sufficient cells for your final reactor volume. And then you grow it to high cell density product, uh, uh, under production. So each step in the process can be optimized uh, to increase expressions. I'll give you some example of what we have done. But before that, I'll just to show you here the, uh, the, the how, how long it takes to uh, uh, to develop a process for the production of therapeutic product. As I said before, the cell line development is the longest part of the whole process, followed by the um, the, in the the purification, development, evaluation, virus reduction. Uh, all of these cells are used to produce virus, but if at the end, virus have to be removed completely from your, your, your products. Uh, the fermentation process development, the analytical development, and the GM 
P manufacturers, they all take time. So, so that the process is really uh, from the transfection of cell lines to production take about two years. So it's a long process and a very costly process to produce these highly high value products. And to help with reducing the cell line development, which takes about a year, and if we do it by like selections of a cell from uh, a populations of uh, different productivities, we wanted to look for the high producer clone and the high producer clone will give us the high producer cell line if it's stable. This. We have developed a method in which you see we here we uh, use uh, a biotin neutral everything to the biotinate cells and the secreted protein will be captured by the this biotinated antibody which is conjugated to uh, to, to, to the surface of the of, of the cells and uh, we, we, we later we can put that into a flow cytometer and then detect the cell productivity by looking at the a product uh, attached to the cell membranes uh, with using a 5 PC. So by flow cytometry, fluorescent microscopy or flow cytometry is that we can select the high producer cell line. And this process will take hours, days, rather than months. This it's a very economical process. And when we developed this process, we wanted actually to uh, uh, to, to patent the process. And I do want to give you an example because this is what you see for young people. A few they you will see that when you develop process, not always be successful in patenting, and then you may the benefits by making more money. No, most of the cases is really for us the, the scientists um, the failure with that. It, it, they two different processes. Now production, development, innovation versus then patenting and then developing a company and that company which will produce this and market it. Uh, it's it's completely different way. Right? So what, actually when we have done this, at the end of the day, we thought it's really hard to go and publish the work. So we published the work without patenting. Laws that came after us and then looked at the process and they said, this is economical process. This is not something we can do with this. So what they have done, instead of using a biotinated antibody, they have used biotinated protein A. And they patented the process and they incorporated the process into their process development and now they are reducing substantially the length of the process of cell line selection. So, the first uh, lesson I learned that money isn't everything. Innovations, publications, for scientists it's always that go for publications, forget about the money and regret Later. Now, as I said before, that increasing cell number is a very important thing. Now, there are different ways, and I think microbiologists know that fat batch culture is the most efficient way of Im improving improving the productivity of the process. And here, the, the example differences in cell number between fat batch, chemostat, and batch culture. So what batch culture is eventually the cell would die, but the, all of them, they eventually you have to terminate the process and harvest your product. A fed batch is prolonging the period of it by feeding, and, and, and feeding is a very important process here to increase the cell number, thus you increase your product. And in looking at increasing the product, we wanted to see what is it actually the best way to do that, and we use that control, you know, we fed with amino acids or we fed with meat that talks, this hydrogen uh, and, and we managed to increase the process. But we wanted to understand how this increase, what this increase would lead, why the cell number is increasing. And we found that it's mainly because the cell cycle 
its, its, its duration is reduced. And so as you see here, the S phase is increased. By increasing the S phase in the cell cycle, you, in, you decrease the uh, cell cycle duration. But also the important thing, and as I'll show, show you later, apoptosis and or program cell death and play an important role in this. By reducing apoptosis, you increase the biomass, increasing the biomass, increasing the product with this. There's another thing which most mammalian cell technologists actually ignore, but microbial technologists actually take into account because they look at the biomass rather than cell number. They don't take bacteria and count the bacteria, but they take the whole thing, the number and the size of the of, of bacteria. And we looked at it, is that an important factor in mammalian cells? Yes, it is an important factor. A specific productivity is correlated to the diameter of the cells. So for e, these are four different cell lines, CHO to three CHO, one of them NSCO cell line. And for four cell lines producing different products, recombinant product, you have the same correlation. Specific productivity of pigigram per cell per hour increases as you the diameter of the cells increases. And that diameter of cell later we found that is independent of cell cycle duration because we know the cell cycle phase. Because they, we know that G2 is larger than G1. S is larger than G1. But independent of that also we have a correlation where the size of the cells increases, there is an increase in uh, productivity. And of course, that is a lesson we can uh, uh, learn to improve the productivity, eventually improve productivity. Now, we have also looked at it, but in, like, in a different way. We were interested in CMIC, because CMIC is, 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 is a gene involved in the proliferations, involved in apoptosis, involved in various uh, pathways within, the, within the, the cell. And we were interested if we overexpress CMIC within the cells for the, for the effect on proliferation. And here you see the differences. That is a CMIC. With the CMIC you have substantial increase in cell number. So we were expecting that more cells more product. No, that wasn't the case with it. And if you look here at the cell size, you see the control cell size larger cell volume. Now, the, uh, the, the cell with the CMIC has a smaller diameter, smaller volume. It decreases the cells because the cell, before it's achieving really its final volume start to divide. So by rapid divisions, actually using now the same amount of neutral available to the cells. So the cells becomes now in number, more in number, but the total volume mass remain more or less the same. Here, look at the viable cell number between the, the CMIC cell line and the control. Cell volume decreases. The Volumetric here. So, but from these, we concluded that the cell size is an important determinant of biomass. And we advise industry to look at the biomass rather than the cell number, because the variation in the cells in the cell size. And now, the more and more we really looking at the same methodology of, of looking at the cell, uh, cell biomass as for microbial, microbial culture. Now, let me now go to back to the same slide before in which we have used to, uh, to enhance cell number by feeding with peptone. And we looked at apoptosis. And here, with this, one of the reasons why the cell number is lower is because apoptosis is higher. And apoptosis, by reducing cell death in the capture, you'll be able to increase the cell number. So these are the two determinants of cell number. is cell cycle and apoptosis. Apoptosis, for those who you know, are engineering, biologists all now know very well what apoptosis is. Apoptosis is a process which can be induced by several stimuli. 
they they some of them sound like a growth factor withdrawal, toxic insult, UV radiation from the cells. And the uh, the determinant of cell suicide or cell death is by the interplay between the two sets of genes, pro-apoptotic genes and anti-apoptotic genes. They're both members of the BCR2 family. The backs, the, uh, the back and the bad interact with BCR2 or BCRX. And the interaction between those two will lead to uh, the, uh, the, the change in the in the membrane, the mitochondrial membrane, transmembrane potential, and the, che the reduction of the mitochondrial membrane potential will lead to the release of cytochrome C. And cytochrome C, with the help of the DATP, the bind to, uh, uh, to ABA1, and ABA1 will uh, activate the, activates, uh, the, the caspases. The proteolytic, these are proteolytic enzymes, and the cascades of these enzymes, starting with the pro cascade scan, would lead eventually to apoptosis in the cell, and the cell could commit suicide. Now, there are many uh, uh, other genes involved in to either uh, enhancing the death of the cells or preventing death of the cells. So, what's the use of that? Why are we interested in, in, in cell culture into this? We thought of this 20 years ago, and they, at that time, there's really no one interested into cell death, into bioreactors, because obviously they want more cells. Now, so we looked at apoptosis and apoptosis pathology into the cells. And this is an so normal cells, if you stain them with acridine orange and propidium iodide, propidium iodide will stain dead cells. These are necrotic cells. Apoptotic cells remain green because the membrane is intact. The, the, they look alive if you use if you use a propetium iodide or uh, iodide or triban blue because the membrane is intact. However, there are important and significant changes within the cell, uh, and some of them is the shrinkage of the uh, nuclear structure and then the blebbing, and then we're blebbing for, for leading to fragmentation. Eventually the cells become also uh, PR positive. So you can look at these different categories and you can divide them, divide your population and the microscope simply into a viable, apatotic, necrotic, necrotic, apatotic, which is the completely dead cells. And we went to the bioreactor, we took cells from the bioreactor, and we wanted and at that time to understand how cells die. So we looked at the different factors that induce apoptosis, and we found that the most important one is the neutron depletion, toxic accumulation, the hydrodynamic damage, the pH variation, suboptimal temperature, high and low dissolved oxygen. All of these lead to apoptotic, and apoptotic is the main mechanism of cell death. Now, by okay, discovering that, it's very important to develop a strategy to prevent cell death and increase cell number, because in apoptotic can be prevented. Necrotic is not, it's a passive cell death. It's like you're stepping over the cells and you kill it like this, while apoptotic is a, is, is a death from inside from inside the cells and link which the cells will uh, uh, die uh, through a mechanism, through a pathway internally uh, to allow the body to survive. And we wanted to publish this data. So we went to the and we sent it to a journal and the referee came back with saying why you are interested in cell death. We are in this field interested in making more cells in life. So, Remove all these electron micrographs to show cell death. And stupid me also said, I wanted to publish the paper. And then, so these are removed. And then, but left just one little paragraph to show these cells and one electron micrograph to show the morphology, electron microscopy of cells dying by apoptosis. Apoptosis wasn't our subject. 
then in the early 90s they became a sexy subject and because like everyone wanted to work on because later Nobel Prize winners got their work on apoptosis. By that time I was doing something else. So then when the subject becomes too hot, I wanted to touch it. But I felt sorry for myself. Uh, so the advice that I'll give you is don't listen to the rhythm. <laughs> Argue your case. Because you know better than the rhythm. And reviewers always they have their views. And they, they come with all of these different things. And, but then that's increased my confidence. And I felt like I'm in the right time to go back to Apertosis Reserve. And what we did, we took the BCL2, we inserted it into the cell line. And here you have the results when you over express BCL2 with this. You over express, you get more cells. Cells refuse to die. This is a batch culture. A normal bad culture. And look what happened. This is laboratory results. We took it to industrial optimized conditions with 10, uh, 100, 100 liter uh, fermenters. And you can see the, uh, with, in both cases, uh, always there are differences. This is the, uh, this is the BCL2. Forget about the color. This is the BCL2 uh, 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 cell line, CHO, a BCL2 cell line. So, if you wanted to uh, 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 prevent the process in Bahiraqa, then obviously then many players, it is your chemical environment to reduce that by feeding. Okay, that's the easiest thing. But the, genetically, you can manipulate the cell, put anti apatogenic gene such as BCR2, and you increase it. You increase cell viability, you prolong structure duration, you reduce serum dependency. That's the other, other, another thing. They, they consume less in nutrient to survive. And the, uh, the improve, it is also improves a nutrient metabolism, protects cells in stressful condition, enhance adaptation, serum free media, and also in suspension. Because these cells are actually the anchorage dependence. When you start with, the, with any cells from the body, you resurface for them to attach. But in large scale fermenter, it's more important that to have them all in suspension. Now, if you put them immediately, you take them off from the surface and put them into suspension, they will die. So that is also a process you need to optimize. You need to think about what is the best way uh, to uh, transfer the cells in the shortest possible time or from anchorage-dependent cells into anchorage-independent cells, i.e. they grow in suspension. And then, of course, we wanted to know more about the, uh, how these products are produced and to, in order to optimize them. And then many, many things, it, it's really there. It is, it's much more complex than microbial culture. And one of the things when we were looking, first of all, about the instability and why the cell, most of the cells, high producer cells, are instable. And if they will, they will actually, within two weeks, three weeks, they lose their productivity. They don't remain high producers. They lose gradually their productivity. So we looked at the chromosome number, and we found that these genes, actually, they leave a CHO normal cell. It's not a normal cell. It's an abnormal cell with a chromosome number varies between 21. The, 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 most of the cells have 20 chromosomes, but some of them have 21 chromosome, 22 chromosome even. But some of the cells we found that survive with even 10 chromosomes. How can this happen? These cells, and, they, and, and it, it thinks that if you, anyone know about the telomerase, we, we went and then we transfect the cells with telomerase, which actually the, uh, 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 the, the factor that build the, the telomere into the cells and allow the cells to become more stable. Because their chromosomes number, they, they remain, and their chromosomes they remain and, uh, the same size, and, 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 in, and by that enhances the productivity. And if you if you think about the stability in terms of 
the molecular events that are known to produce this recombinant protein. Because we are only interested in the recombinant protein. Doesn't matter what happened to the cells inside. What we wanted to see how the productivity would remain constant. And then we look at other factors associated with the process, such as here the G copy number. Most of the, these published data you see here, papers published, you see, they are using different clones, number of clones from 17, 6, 5, some paper, some, the, that paper they uh, use 16 number of clones. Most of them say there is no relationship between the two. The G copy number. However, messenger RNA expression is very important for productivity. And most of the papers they say there is a, a, a relationship between uh, messenger RNA level and productivity. These are indicators, and then you all know about the uh, biomarkers in cancer and uh, in other uh, diseases. Now, we wanted that to, to see if there is a marker for productivity, but this is a much more complex process. And it's very difficult to, to find a single one. The most important one, in most of the uh, researchers agree on is the messenger RNA. Other cellular markers for productivity, the integration sites is very important into gene localization. The for monoclonal antibody is the heavy chain to light chain gene ratio, also is important. Messenger RNA half life, the heavy chain, light chain, intracellular polypeptides, uh, the extracellular polypeptides, the intracellular antibody. As you see here, well, some of them they show very good relationship with the productivity, the others less and no, or no relationship with productivity. One recent paper uh, published uh, about the gene expression profile in, in which they looked at um, thousands of gene microarrays and they found 287 genes. If they pick those genes, then the, there is a good relationship between uh, specific productivity, the predicted specific productivity and the actual uh, 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 specific productivity of the clones. And these are many of the clones. They have used several clones, an array of clones, and they looked at each clone, the expression level of these 100, 287. But this is a complex thing. Really, industry want to avoid this by looking at the expression level of these, and then when they pick these uh, genes, they will pick, uh, or, or the pick a clone with high expression level of these genes, they will pick high producers. Still, even if they pick these clones and the high producer initially, there is no guarantee they are going to be stable cell lines. They lose them. There are other methods, simpler methods. Industry find, trying to find simpler methods for selecting high producers and stable producer cell lines. We took a few clones of different productivity. And here you see the productivity level of uh, several clones from 51 picogram cell per day to three you know, very low productivity cell lines. These are all stable cell lines with different level of productivity. So we wanted to ask the same question, what uh, actually the most important markers associated with productivity? And here they are. So again, we found the high, the, sorry, it's the, the heavy chain messenger RNA and the low chain polypeptides, the specific growth rate, these are the most important uh, factors associated with the productivity. So if you wanted to look at a productivity, you need to look at number of parameters uh, in, in, uh, and these are the, the show, we show you the most probable factors that, uh, that uh, con which 
that may control productivity. Now, further to understand the relationship between productivity and the growth rate, because the growth rate is, is an important factor, let's see when you slow growth, you increase the productivity. We arrested the cells using P21, and by overexpression of P21, you can arrest the cells in G1 stage of the cell cycle. So, the, to answer these equations, then, what cause an increase in cellular productivity when you arrest the cells? And how does a cell increase this is specific to productivity? Uh, we uh, looked at various factors within this, this, the cells. And what we have found that beside the monoclonal antibody productivity increase, there is an increase in cell volume. Again, cell volume show some interest here and show that it is an important factor in determining productivity. And by increasing the cell volume, there are other factors which are associated with increasing cytoplasmic, uh, uh, cytoplasmic volume, uh, such as the mitochondrial activities, oxygen uptake rate, total cellular protein, a dry cell weight, ribosomal biogenesis, and the, obviously the intracellular product. The intracellular mass of, uh, of the product is associated with the extracellular product. But there is no preferential increase in the antibody production rate in relation to protein. That means if you arrest the cells and the volumes increase, in recombinant cells, you will have an increase in total protein as, as well as your protein of interest. And to summarize these results, so we've done some genomic, proteomic, metabolomic studies on such system, and we focus on the, the uh, cytoarrest system arresting the cells and increasing productivity so we can separate between growth and productivity. And we looked at that to summarize it, what we have found from metabolomic, for example, and from physiology, that these cells, high producer cells, have high glutamine and glucose uptake rates. And from the metabolomics, we found that glutamine and glucose increase intracellularly. And this will affect the fiber beta and increase also the oxalic acetate and citrate levels. And these have been you know, important in fatty acid synthesis. And fatty acid metabolism will lead to more ATP because it's a, a fatty acid metabolism will lead to increased organelles such as mitochondria. And that together with the increase of mitochondrial membrane potential in the higher producer cell line means more energy. More energy more products. So, enhance energy metabolism, you will enhance productivity in these cell lines. Generally, the, uh, what we have found from all of this, this is a complex slide, sorry for that, at all level, gene expression level, intracellular metabolic profile, phenotype, to lead a conclusion that the increase specific monoclonal antibody productivity resulting from overall increase in cell growth and that gene control is also likely to be responsible for the changes rather than a diversion of cellular energy and, and capacity. Our hypothesis initially was based that when you arrest the cells, the energy used for growth is going to be diverted for the production of a component protein. But we found that this is not sufficient to lead to such significant increase in productivity. So the conclusion was that more energy are generated through different pathways, not related to growth, not related to, uh, uh, to, to growth rate. And that would uh, help the increase in specific productivity. Now, there is another phase which worried many of us, that is that the metabolic burden. And that is the same in my microbial culture. Now, 
It, a lot of people, they publish their data and they say there is an increase because they have manipulated the process. They manipulated the cells, they manipulated the external environment, and they need to improve the process. Now, why? We said they all, and in many cases in our in, in lab, we could not get such enhancement in, 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 in the productivity. We found that the reason is because of metabolic burden. And this is an example here. If you take a cell line, high producer cell line, and try to improve it, it's difficult. If you take low producing cell line, and try to improve it, so easy. Most of them go back to the literature and then see about improvement of processes and improvement of production. They're all using a modestly high or low producer. Low uh, low producer or modestly high producer uh, cell line. They never use a very uh, like optimized industrially used cell line because industry won't give them anyway this cell line to be to to to, uh, to try to further improve it. And this is it. It's like there is a bottleneck. And if you look at the, this, you find that when we have this, this is high producer cell line and we try to improve it by glucose feeding, we achieve nothing, no increase. The medium producer, 1.4 fold increase in this. The low producer cell line, 7.5 fold increase by the same process of, of glucose feeding. The bottlenecks here for the production are several. From the messenger RNA to the secretory pathway. Uh, several of these you need to look at them. And to prove that, we have used different processes to improve, which is used in industry. Hypothermia, we use temperature, which increases the productivity. It's been shown before to increase the productivity. And we use three cell lines low producer, medium producer, high producer. Cell density is always changed. Of course, you reduce cell density if you use suboptimal temperature. Hyperosmolarity. Uh, hyper of course, when you add more salt, you reduce the growth, the growth rate, because there is a negative relationship between the growth and productivity. So you reduce growth, you increase the productivity. But would they all behave the same way? Low producer, medium producer, high producer? And you look at those arrested cells, sodium butyrate, glucose fat culture, all of these would lead to a productivity. Let's look at the rate of increase. Here are the, the differences. With all of them, hypothermia, hyperosmolarity, glucose fed culture, arrested culture, and sodium butyrate culture, you find that the low producer achieve higher, further improvement when you treat the cells. With that specific factor. And you see here, the low show higher additional specific product, increase in specific productivity, the same as with hyperosmolarity, with the glucose fed, with the acid culture, they all the same, follow the same thing. This is a problem which is called metabolic burden. This is now when you have, when you overexpress, and this is happening in microbial culture, when you overexpress a gene and you, the overexpression will require a lot of energy from the cells, and that means the cells will no longer be able to increase protein, protein synthesis, including, of course, the recombinant protein. Product. So in here, you have to find a way if you wanted to further increase high producer, already high producer cell line. But if you want to impress with your publication others, select a low producer cell line. <laughs> so, reaching my conclusion. Quality by design is now and a necessary thing for by, by FDA recommendation to make a new cell lines. 
is rational design of it rather than by um, multiple random processes uh, trying to, uh, to, to, to improve cell life. So you really have to do in, in, to improve the productivity of cell, cell product, you need to really look at the molecular profiling of the high producing cell line and you need to look at more systematic way of cellular physiology, the metabolic profiling, transcriptomic analysis, and also for monoclonal, special monoclonal antibodies, for example, you look at how these particular molecules are synthesized from originally lacking by the plasma cell. So you look at the plasma cell differentiation program. Also, one central a important pathway in protein synthesis, like the mTOR signaling pathways. And I'm not going to talk about these. These all been done in my lab, and we have achieved some good results with looking at all of these aspects at the molecular levels. And perhaps in course we'll be going to uh, deal with that with the with the with the, with the different audience folks with this. Uh, and to give you finally an example how process uh, optimization is successful, if you incorporate all of these discoveries, and here for an example, we show you a cell line and a process. Uh, with the antibody, they started with 139 milligram per liter. It's a lo relatively low producer of cell lines in this. And within like less than a year, with the media development, with manipulating the cell environment and manipulating the intracellular structure and, and the molecular structure of the, of the cells, they have reached 2,829 milligram per liter. And further you can do that. This is before you can take the cells to industrial scale level. So you can improve the cell line and you make the cells more productive, economically productive, even you are dealing with high value product. You still can improve that and make money. So in summary, metabolic burden is associated with a productivity level. The higher producers, the less, uh, 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 the less res uh, responsive to your changes or to your treatment. Cells high productivity is not a process regulated by master controllers. So you don't expect if you wanted to look at the association between high productivity and intracellular strain, uh, cell, cellular factor, we won't be able uh, to achieve that. It is much more complex than a relationship between one factor and productivity. It's several other factors, including cell death, proliferation, energy metabolism, and redox balance. So, by if, if you to, end, to understand the productivity, it means that in the future we can design or select a cell line with consistently higher productivity. And my conclusion is that the increasing number of mammalian cell product in development is the driver as I started my talk with driver for improved and faster process development technology. It's the demand which actually makes more work done into this and more and increasing interest between scientists in taking this field and doing research in this field. The high volume demands are driving both capacity and improvement in the process efficiency and great potential to use advances in basic science to inform a process improvement. For the young people here, then my uh, last thing or advice is that to get all of that, you need to cooperate to be greater rewards. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Um, thanks very much, so, um, You mentioned that uh, by 2020, as far as I remember, you, the mammalian cells or animal cells technology will deliver product types similar to microbial cell technologies. But I didn't really understand that. The number you showed, I don't know, 10, 20 grams per liter, is, yeah, 
could be still low compared to microbial cell technologies. But my, my question is, uh, there is one intrinsic difference between monogen cells or animal cells and microbial cells, is that microbial cells are much smaller. And that's one of the advantages they have, because the surface to volume ratio is really high. So, uh, is this a limit to what mammalian cells can do? And are there people trying to make them smaller to get uh, their uh, more production? The answer about well, the people trying to make them smaller, no. There isn't anyone trying to do that. They, they actually, they, this is intrinsic characteristics of animal cell besides it, it's really, you, uh, if you change the site uh, dramatically, of course, uh, you won't be able to go into other alive cells. You kill the cells in, the, in, in this way. And the, uh, the, the comparison with microbial culture, it's just to show you that within a very short period of time, the development in this field, and this is because we are producing high value product. We are, uh, the, uh, the industry is in here dealing with uh, much more expensive product. And uh, it, it, it's, at the moment, it's much more even in demand of these, the, 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 these products, especially uh, I'm talking about the therapeutic products. So the increase in, in, in cell number is that the driving force for such development. And that will, uh, has led to the two increase in productivity. And increase in productivity, it's, it, it's now, it, 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 it's not sufficient by in just increasing cell number. There is a limit there. We're reaching the limit of the cell number that we can achieve if we, even if we put them into a, a, a pack bed we will not get more than five times 10 to eight cells per mil. Uh, and that's approaching the tissue density. So even with that, and by doing that, we are going to experience a mass transfer limitation. And it means that we are not going to get a, a homogeneous culture. Uh, the, the heterogeneity is going to be very clear that because of the movement of oxygen on nutrient where cell at the surface is not, is not going to utilize all the nutrients and the one in the middle in the core of the fermenter, it go, they're going to die because of the accumulation of toxic metabolites and the lack of sufficient to treat a nutrient. So this is why we put them into strict tank bioreactors. And that there will be limit in there in the maximum cell number. So what else we can do is we look at the specific productivity. We look at the cells, the cells of produces. Now, we, we have to compare like myeloma cells, for example, for a production of monoclonal antibody. What is the, uh, the one in the body? How much it produces? So then, then we, we, we will have a, like, something like a, a standard. We look at it and we say, let's improve the cells and then instead of producing 50 picogram per cell per, 20, per day, up to 70. Per, and by increasing this, and increasing the cell number slightly further, if we can enhance that, then the total productivity, the final productivity is going to increase. And that's what I meant by the 10, gram per liter or 20 gram per liter and that is equivalent to what microbial cell produces. Sheer stress I imagine is a big issue when you cultivate your animal cells in steer tank reactors. <laughs> How can you go about that problem? Uh, what about microcarriers for animal cells? Well I can start my answer this equation by saying it's no longer an issue. Sheer stress, I'm sorry. But then, well, I'm happy to say that. Uh, it's now, the, I remember then when we started doing work on the shear, uh, the effect of shear, or the, effect, the hydrodynamic damage to the cells in the late 80s. Um, at that time, nobody did know very much about the chloronic F68. 
pleuronic FCCT is added now into the culture. In every culture of mammalian cells, you add pleuronic. Pleuronic is anti, it's like anti-surfactant. It's, it's a surface modification agent, uh, and they protect the cells from bubble bursting. Bubble bursting is the main issue in cell culture because it generates such a huge amount of energy that at the surface, when the cells are at the surface, bang, and uh, kill the cells. It's not only kill the cells, but shatter the cells and then get into debris. And even a lot of people in the early stages, they say it has no effect because they couldn't see the cells. And they couldn't see the cells because the cells shatter into debris. And so powerful, the, the, uh, the, uh, the energy uh, dissipated by bubble bursting that it, 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 the cells, when come in contact with the bubble, when it bursts, uh, it, it, it has completely vanished. Yes. Now, the, this, this is unimportant. It's managed now by, by pleuronic, as I said, pleuronic visitate. Also, the size of the bubbles. Now we have a, a mesh or a micro, uh, micro spargers, and then the smaller bubbles, the smaller bubbles are better really uh, for aeration of them because in, 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 in that means uh, oxygen uh, solubility is going to enhance. And you're enhancing oxygen, you would need less volume, total volume of air, that means bubbles. Although a smaller bubble is more detrimental to the cells than large bubbles. But the amount of oxygen dissolved into the, into the uh, 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 bioreactor is higher. Yeah, uh, my question is the same direction, more or less. Uh, what was the role of uh, bioreactor design in this enhancement of productivity? I mean, you, uh, to handle with all those uh, difficulties, the bioreactors, you have specific solutions, and how did they? And do you see? Do you think that uh, is is there a space for further improvement uh, in this direction? Well, I, I don't think that many uh, development happening. Uh, these days, in in in, uh, in 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 changing the bioreactor configurations, designing of new bioreactors, it was like in the 90s there were several of the different uh, systems uh, developed, and most of them are actually implemented in uh, in microbial cultures and, and especially the yeast, and, and they 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 uh, they tried for mammalian cell, but. Now, I would say 95% of productions of recombinant protein in mammalian cells using stirred tank bioreactor, and the process is fed, ba fed batch. Uh, the reason, probably, uh, is that industry always think, in industry, they know the engineering. I don't know why. They always they say, do the biology, and they give money to do the biology, but they do the engineering, and then actually they don't do anything. They're happy with that, because they're happy with making money, and that's it. They make a sufficient money, you know, some sufficient profit, uh, and this is why it's not really doing a lot of research on uh, what we have uh, uh, investment or, or, or funding from industry is very little from it. Because industry, what they want, they want a cell line. Give me high producer, relatively high producer cell line. You could do that in the lab. High producer cell line, stable cell line, and I give you product. That's it. That's what the market wants. First, I just have a, a little comment about it because I work with this kind of product. And uh, I think uh, about the process, I think uh, the most important point is High producers is better for us because the concept, conceptual plant, uh, because we can work with as 500 or 5,000 liters or 500 liters. So it's very important for us, including the productive. And the complexity of the product and value of this, the product is more important. So uh, we, now we have some companies offering 
new process for perfusion, fat batch, and higher producers, more than 20 milligrams per liter. So we have new, new process and new product. What do I see now? It's more difficult for this new process is that they, they don't look at so close to quality of the product because our m most issue, important issue in monoclonal antibodies important is about the quality of production. I think... Uh, so the quality, you say? Quality yeah. is, is most, more important. It's a very complex product. Any, any change in, in process is very important. Sorry. Do you have any experience in, in very high concentration? Because we know in high concentration of cells, we have problems with amino acid uh, oxidations and other issues about the process. In high concentration, do you have any, yeah. any information yes. about quality of the, this process? Well, that is a very important issue you raised with the, with the quality. I, I did not touch on that, uh, uh, unfortunately, it's a time uh, constraint. The, uh, the, 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 the quality is so important for the industry at, at the moment. They would look at every process in terms of quality rather than the, 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 the quality. And the quality means mostly the glycosylations of these products. Uh, uh, other post-translational modifications also uh, they, they play an important role, but the, then they look at the glycosylation. And you said uh, rightly, then the, the, uh, the uh, uh, intensity of the process affecting glycosylations, and that's one, another factor which is preventing this. Uh, it's really how to keep the fidelity of the molecules so uh, high uh, and so acceptable uh, that within increasing the product, you are not making a, 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 a product which is not fully glycosylated. Uh, and, that, and that is uh, a, a, it's the, the core issue now in, 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 in industry. It's, uh, it's the pH, for example, you can control the pH, even a very high in intensive process. The temperature, yes, and these are factors are very important for, uh, the, for glycosylation, for a, a, a proper glycosylation. Um, the, uh, the environmental thing. Again, the intracellular assembly of the molecules is its, it's important role. Again, with this, with the bottlenecks and limitations, and then you have uh, molecules um, not fully assembled are produced, secreted in the, into your reactor if you're going to increase or enhance uh, intracellular synthesis of your, your, your product. So the environment, as well as the, the extracellular and intracellular envir environment, both play roles into the getting the uh, uh, a product, uh, um, uh, authentic product, and fully glycosylated.